Hello there and welcome back. I have been wanting to do a video about this for quite some time and finally the time has arrived. So here's a study done by Dr. Richie Davidson and of course he is someone that I greatly admire. Graduated Harvard 1976 in psychology and since then he's been studying happiness basically and the circuits in the brain responsible for resilience. Right, the circuits in the brain that are responsible for being able to bounce back and uh, respond very proactively uh, despite the slings and arrows that come with life. So, in this study, he found out that prolonged marital stress is associated with short-lived responses to positive stimuli. And basically that stress in a relationship can compromise emotion regulation circuitry. So, what does that mean? That means that if you're Let's do the other side. When you're in a relationship, usually, you know, you do something good, and then your partner says, hey, babe, way to go, you did a good job. And if you screw up on something, then your partner says, oh, well, babe, you did okay, we'll get them next time. And this is actually a really good thing, you know, you end up having um, more positive states of being through longer periods of time. And this is a lovely way to go through life because you end up seeing things better, and you have less stress, and it's greater overall. Conversely, womp womp, there are times when you have marital stress. And marital stress is, well, let me, let me read this to you. Marital stress is associated with a higher incidence of psychiatric disorders, in particular major depression. That's not a good thing. So what the study had shown is that when a person's in a relationship and there's stress there, like, uh, honey, I did this thing and it didn't quite work out and that person says, well, you're a fool, you're a dummy or whatever. What ends up happening is you become less resilient. Now, the way this thing kind of works is like when good things happen, instead of going, yay, a good thing happened and staying up there and then eventually returning back to a baseline, people that have had marital stress, what ends up happening is over time, a good thing will happen and they'll feel good but only for a brief amount of time, and then they'll quickly get back to baseline. And it's not even a high baseline. Also, when you show them a negative picture, right, some bad things happening to kids or accidents and stuff, a person that's had marital stress prolonged, like a lot of marital stress through a long period of time, not only will they see that thing and feel lousy and feel down and out in the dumps, but it takes them a long time to get back up to baseline. Not a good thing. This is why there's so much depression that can happen that's related to marital stress. So stress is a bad thing. Of course, you've known that. But when you take this apart into and look at it in a slightly more deeper way, you'll find out that it compromises emotion regulation circuitry. And this is by the work of Dr. Richie Davidson, who specializes in figuring out how to rewire the brain so that people can become more resilient and be able to bounce back. Now, in this study, he mentions a bunch of other studies that he's talking about, and it shows basically these studies indicate that marital strain is a powerful stressor with serious costs to emotional well-being. Well, isn't that just great news? And no, it's not great news, right? So if you have had a breakup or are going through a divorce and you're finding yourself having a tough time with it, like you're not feeling too joyful, you feel like you're not really getting the most out of life, maybe feeling a lot of anxiety, maybe just feeling kind of like down in the dumps far more than you'd like to be, you know, maybe replaying things in the past over and over and over. It's not your fault. It's your brain. There is, you know, some compromise, some kind of setbacks that have occurred in your wiring. So now I'm going to get into a little bit more detail with this and let's bring up this slide up here. Now I call this the X program. All right, so let's just play this thing here. Boom, X program. So what this basically is, is bad thinking that becomes habituated and causes a person to be less resilient. Okay. Now the reason I'm bringing this up is not so that you can go this way, but it's to recognize that if you start doing this, how dangerous it is and what you can do to stop it okay so let's get into this a little bit first of all stress is a killer okay it's the number one killer in the world uh, stress can come from job pressure um, money issues 
uh, health crisis and relationships, right? Divorce, death of a spouse, arguments with a friend, feeling loneliness. Now, it's not so much, oh, an event happened, so therefore I'm going to have stress. It's really about how we respond to things. Because let's face it, bad stuff happens to everyone. And some people respond like a champ, and some don't. So it's not so much about the, the thing that's bad. It's like Shakespeare said, there's not things that are good or bad. It's thinking that makes it so. So how do you make it not so? All right, so let's flip this around. Now, we already spoke about how marital stress is, uh, can, can have an effect and influence on um, causing emotion regulation circuitry to be compromised. We've already touched on that. Now, for this next point, I just want to give you a little bit of backstory. So in our brain, we have the system called the limbic system. It's a mammalian part of the brain. It's responsible mostly for emotions and memories. So if you're looking to be getting over your ex and getting over your breakup, obviously there's going to be some emotions that would be best to be updated and shifted and changed around, and also some memories, right? Those memories were attached to um, those memories were attached to emotions. So since the system is talking about memories and emotions. Obviously, some kind of change is going to happen there. Now, let's just go a little deeper here. In our bodies, we have this nervous system, right? And our nervous system disease are basically going in one of two states. One is sympathetic response, which is like a stress response. Like, you know, if somebody comes running at you with a knife, um, you're not going to think, hmm, what should I do? I wonder if I should send blood to my arms and legs to fight and run and defend myself. No, no, no. It'll happen automatically, right? So this is the sympathetic response. And whenever there's stress... Boom, our body, you know, spikes in adrenaline, glucocorticoids, then we have energy to mobilize yourself. Great. And then the flip side of that, womp womp, so stress, sympathetic. The flip side to that is this kind of rest and relaxation mode known as parasympathetic response. And the way I remember it is P for peace. Yay, peace. So this is mostly a nighttime response. It deals with digestion. And this is a builder. This is a time when people are feeling quite close. You know, there's oxytocin here and cuddling and warmth. So it's basically, you know, red light, green light. This is like a, a way to, to, to think about it. Okay, so now that we've got this little bit of backstory, now we can understand how X program can be created. So this comes from Linda Graham. She's author of this, author of this book called Bouncing Back. Rewiring Your Brain for Maximum Resilience and Well-Being. And in this book, she talks about how people can have uh, a negative response, like a negative thing happen, and they're like, oh, they got divorced, oh, they got a breakup, something bad happens, and how they can make that worse and worse and worse for themselves. So let's begin. Okay, so here we go, the X program. Step one, criticism. Womp womp. Okay, so internal or external, and this is a very important point about this internal, external, and I'll get more about that. We'll talk about that more as we progress further in this video. Now, by internal or external, it means you can just be imagining criticism, you know, remembering a time when that ex was having a fight with you or yelling at you or pointing their finger at you or saying things that really, you know, made you angry or sad or guilty. So... That's internal. Now, external, it could be actually happening in real life. Other people saying, hey, you're, you're no good. Well, all right. So criticism. When we get criticism, it shocks the sympathetic nervous system, right? That stress response into survival response, right? Oh, yeah, fight and flight mode. Well, then step two is this. The shock, that shock, it rapidly activates the parasympathetic nervous system's submit and collapse response, which cancels the sympathetic branch set in motion. So we get stressed, er, right? And then we go into, oh, kind of rest and relaxation mode in a sense. So instead of mobilizing for action, fight and flight, we demobilize, collapse, or cave in for protection. This is where it gets worse. Watch this. This collapse can evoke implicit memories conditioned by previous experiences. So, okay, you're having the imagination of criticism coming in, it turns on sympathetic response, and then it flips on to parasympathetic response, and then you start feeling doom and gloom because as you're feeling down and collapsing, this allows you to remember other times where you have failed or perhaps didn't do things in the way that would have been 
best, right? So you start remembering other failures in the past or other times where things just weren't going all that great, right? So then, you know, it's a slippery slope and we land in the abyss of deficiency, unworthiness, inadequacy, and feel like a fraud. Isn't this great? All right, step four, with enough repetition, the brain's response to these memories is to dissociate, to go numb, to check out or disappear. Because if no one can find us, no one can hurt us. All right, so this is like shame. So we undermine ourselves and we close ourselves off from the love and support that would bring us back into connection and action. Okay, so this is how this X program can end up becoming wired into our behavior. So if you ever Rick, read Dr. Joe Dispenza's book about breaking the habit of being yourself, then you recognize that we end up having these kind of habits of behavior. And we're human beings. We're predisposed to being able to have habits and automaticity in our lives in order to make things easier. But this is a program where things don't get easier, where things get worse and worse because we end up only collapsing, collapsing, collapsing. Very bad. Not a good thing. Okay, so now, the best way to crawl out of the swamp of shame is to come into connection with another person who loves and accepts us exactly as we are. Okay, now the problem with this is, what if you don't have someone else that's loved you? Maybe you don't have friends and family. I know that for myself, and uh, the times when I was with my wife... When her and I parted, I felt really embarrassed about it. And so I had disconnected from all my friends and all my family. So I didn't really have somebody to come into connection with to help me get out of that swamp of shame. But this is where this next sentence comes into play. So the way to get out of there is sometimes we just have to conjure up that person in our imagination and then build on that love into and build on that love to come into our own love and acceptance of ourselves exactly as we are. Right? So if you think back to this thing that said internal or external criticism, well, you can have internal love. Like begin to imagine what it would be like to feel love. Right? Because if you don't have anybody, if you don't have family and friends to help you out, you got to make it up in your brain and imagine people that are helping you out and loving you unconditionally. Because the brain really can't tell the difference, emotionally, between fact and fiction. So you might as well give yourself the fiction that gets you out of the swamp, okay? So anyways, that is the X program. Now, the easiest and fastest way to stop the X program, and this is, I think, the easiest and fastest way, is this. Is to just not do step one. So remember how step one of the X program was criticism? Okay. So whenever you have that going on, just stop it. Just just stop it. So when criticism's going on, you're saying to yourself, oh man, how could I have been so stupid? You know, when you're feeling anxious and you're like replaying memories of the past and thinking about, you know, mistakes you've done, should you have stayed, should you have left? What if it was their fault, my fault, his fault? Things should have been different. Why was I so stupid? Why was I so smart? How am I gonna move on? All this kind of criticism. Just Stop it because you know how bad it is, right? You know where it leads, right? If someone says to you, oh, here's the pathway to doom, gloom, and depression, and despondency, and dejection, and rejection. Here's the door. Would you like to take step one? You would say, uh-uh, no thanks, not for me. Okay, so same with the X program. So if you've got criticism going on, internal or external, stop it. Now, some people might have a challenge with this. So what I suggest also is doing in NLP what they call changing the submodalities, which is changing the qualities of it. So if you are experiencing criticism and imagining all that kind of stuff, or even speaking to yourself in that harsh voice, what if you were to change the tone? Oh, you're so silly, aren't you, for doing that? Right? Because you can change the tone. As you're changing the tone, then your body won't have to have that old pathway because you're doing something slightly different. Right? This is a different signal. And so by changing the signal, you can change your response to it. And then that can eventually branch out into other ways so that you'll have better forms of behavior and at least be able to rebuild the circuits in your brain that allow you to be able to bounce back. 
And that is the X program and how you can begin to recognize when it's going on and also how dangerous it is. All right, thanks again for your time and bye for now. Thank you.